I have no idea if this is going to work and whether anybody is interested in this. But I am going to make a series of videos about what I consider to be wrong, completely wrong, completely wrong at its total and utter foundation about the theory of finance. My son is in an NBA program and the kind of rubbish they teach you on or him on betas, the APV, uh, adjusted present value, unlevering and relevering the betas uh, using terminal value with constant growth rates, believing that the capital asset pricing model is reasonable. All of this crap is still there now. So here's what this video is going to be about. All right. It's just going to be the first of a series of videos. If I don't get any views, that's fine, and I'm going to write it up in a book even. And when I started this, I've, I've been thinking about this for many years, and when I started this, I thought, look, look, let me just try to explain finance theory with some financial models. And my heroes were people like Fama, uh, Myron Scholes, and oh, shoot, what happened there? Uh, uh, and and uh, the, the famous kind of, uh, you know, Nobel Prize winners in finance. And then I thought, oh, let's also, you know, then I went to the bank and I thought, oh, God, i got to figure out how these smart investment bankers do something. What do they do to figure out comparables and figure out how to value mergers and acquisitions and everything else? Right now, I'm brave enough after I'm an old man to say this is all bullshit. It really is. All of it. And the total foundations of finance are incredibly ridiculous. Now, you know that CAPM doesn't work, if you still believe that CAPM works, capital asset pricing works. And I hope you understand that this application of some sort of a, a, a constant growth method in the discounted cash flow would be idiotic. I hope you see that when people actually apply multiples, PE, EV to EBITDA ratios, EV to EBITDA ratios are just amazingly bad without directly considering any capital expenditures. Oh my God, how can you ignore investment? Uh, 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 you see that these are bad. You know that they're bad, but what are you going to do about it? You know? So I, uh, uh, I'm i going to work through, and first, oh no, what's going on here? I'm going to first work through and show you that, okay, it's, of course, the terminal value is everything. It's the elephant in the room in, in, in valuation. And how do we do it? I'm going to give you some much more realistic suggestions for solving that. I've done that. I'm going to show you, of course, anybody who... Now, I used to be obsessed with computing the return on invested capital as this statistic that's just centered to everything in finance shows you how much you're worth, how much you're earning, how much you're earning relative to your investment. And everybody's got to make an investment to get some returns. <laughs> we'll see it's a joke. We'll see it's a complete joke. And then I thought, well, maybe project finance is the way to go because at least then we can... The, the bankers are really doing a careful job of risk assessment. Everything about finance is making a forecast of cash flow and then assessing the risk. Well, they kind of do the risk of it for you, and they put most of the money in the investment. 
if they think it's okay and you can earn just kind of a bare a reasonable rate of return, it's a lot better way to look at it. But then uh, the returns don't work. You need to do economic depreciation. Some professor from Oxford says, oh, uh, IRR is bullshit. He doesn't know why. It is because the it doesn't account for the changing of a risk over the lifetime of a project, but you can use these ideas in evaluating new ventures, in evaluating what the true return on invested capital, how it really should be measured. And then, <laughs> just, I mean, to, I, I don't know if I should waste time on talking about the CAPM. It's not about the model, of course. It's not these stupid, oh, ridiculous academic, uh, 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 these ridiculous academic articles that say, oh, I'm proving if beta is really a measure of risk or not. No, no, they can't. you can't get the equity market risk premium right. Beta can be measured. You get a completely different measure of, be measure of beta if you do a, a daily, weekly, monthly uh, uh, data. It's not stable. You uh, the people apply this absurd mean reversion factor, and then they do the worst crime of all, which is putting some arbitrary country risk premiums on top of things. And we're going to go through in a series of videos and show you, uh, first of all, show you that it's all crap. But most importantly, how can we get a real sense on whether there's a country risk premium and how it should be measured by looking at Nestle Nigeria, Nestle Pakistan, Nestle India, Nestle in Switzerland, Nestle in all sorts of different countries and really understanding risks and that special little company we can we can pull out the cost of capital from from, from other measures. Then we'll we'll also talk about how if you really want to measure the cost of capital, you have, a, you have to have a good valuation model. And if you have a good valuation model, you can take cash flows in the stock price and back into the cost of capital. You need a better terminal value. You need to do that. And it all centers around return on invested capital. Now, oh gosh. Okay. First, I'm just going to list some things that are wrong with finance. With finance you know? I, I wonder if this is wasting everybody's time. But yeah, when when the stock market goes up and some television analyst says, oh, you know, in the last few years, it went up by 10 15% per year. And without ignoring that the fact that the interest rates have gone down, which gives you a capital gain, suggesting that the stock market actually represents the earnings power and the uh, 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 and, and that 10% is something like a re return you can expect, which is to say a cost of capital. What crap! What complete and utter. Sh I just can't get over it. When you look at returns in the. Uh, uh, when you look at returns, you have to understand that those stock prices go up and then people say, ah, oh, that's a growth rate. They go up because of capital gains from interest rates going down. When people say, criticize the IRR, which is kind of fi finally a real statistic that's taken over the, the world, and then they say, oh, use the, use the MRR. What a lot of crap that is. Unbelievable. What you need to do is understand how to uh, 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 account for changes in risks. That's what we have to do. <sighs> Here's another thing. When people put their terminal value in and they change and they have these little tables for growth rate changes and, oh my god they don't put anything about return on invested capital like McKinsey tells you to do but what the way they do it is absolute crap and then they don't with the growth rate changing have the uh, the, the 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 investment changing unbelievable unbelievable uh, 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 that when we look at uh, uh, risk premiums, I've kind of already talked about that for countries. It's simply a crime. No other way to say that. New, uh, 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 when <laughs> if you find if you if you want to really understand multiples, PE, EV to EV dollar ratios, uh, uh, price to book ratios, 
you can go through a little simulation and really understand exactly where they come from and how they're affected by the rate of return, changes in the rate of return more than anything else, changes in the growth rate. And we're going to want to, we'll have a chapter on that. Okay, same. This is just crap. This, this, uh, what, what is it, the CFA? You know, saying that debt is always. Uh, 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 riskier than equity capital because officially it's in a bankruptcy you get paid first without understanding that when you assess a credit spread you only have downside and no upside risk and particularly when a company is close to a, 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 a bankruptcy the equity is basically an option. It's just a, 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 a call option with an upside and limited downside. How can you possibly make these absurd kind of underneath uh, statements about financing? Understanding the next one. When you, people have computed the way, this drives me crazy. As a modeler, understanding that the whack in the traditional way WAC is applied doesn't work. Can you believe it? It doesn't work But when you when you account for the tax shield on the interest. A tax shield on the interest you almost consider as a government grant. And if you really understand the debt holders have their nominal uh, uh, interest rate and they value things at the, 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 the pre-tax interest rate, and they'll have to pay their own personal taxes like equity holders. Fine. But when you work through it, you can demonstrate that that the that, that the mechanics, the simple mechanics of whack in measuring the tax shield really, really don't work. I'm not BSing here. Okay. When we work through uh, 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 stock prices, you know, I learned long, long, long ago that stock prices uh, reflect the. Uh, uh, only current information. You can't find any past information. There's no mean reversion in stock prices. Simply not true. We can get data. We can demonstrate it. That's why you get the uh, 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 the differences in betas. Where, you, where when you measure beta over a, a, a day, a week, a month, there's mean reversion. It doesn't work anymore. Oh my gosh. And then you this McKinsey formula, which I prove and I. Okay, whatever. And it's it, there's a little bit of good to it, a little bit of good, but it totally falls apart in practice. It totally and completely falls apart in practice because you cannot, uh, it doesn't accurately reflect changes in the cost of capital where things stabilize over some kind of time period and, uh, 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 and it doesn't reflect stabilization in growth rates and it doesn't allow you to do anything now when you fix the terminal value we're going to use this but we're going to fix this formula and really work through it and understand it instead of simply putting it in a simplistic way okay and uh you know i think that's enough i'm gonna go through that's too much and so, so I hope that you don't think I'm some arrogant ass, which I am. Not, I, I don't want to be arrogant. Uh, maybe I'm an ass. But the, 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 uh, uh, the way <laughs> that you can demonstrate all of these things, the, the problems with all these things, is working through a little bit of uh, uh, financial modeling, getting your hands dirty with data that's now available. So I'm going to go through this, and then I have thought over the years, oh, how should I do this? Should I just shut up? Oh, what the heck? I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to continue with it, okay? And when I continue with it, I'm going to use this, the, the, the kind of idea, the, the, the kind of idea that I thought about making case studies showing how crap some of those Harvard case studies are with their wacko conclusions and defenses of of, of, of of the way the stat the way finance is done no I'm going to use this formula the basic idea it's such a simple idea obviously that you should make a return greater than your cost of capital if you do that you should grow the business if you make a return less than your cost of capital get the hell out of the business if your return is greater than your cost of capital and you simply can't grow, call yourself a cash cow, get the cost of capital low, and that's okay. 
if the return is less than the cost of capital, then you should stop growing, but stop growing as fast as you possibly can. What a great way. That is such a, 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 a decent foundation. But then how to measure the returns, it, it just, then it falls apart. How to evaluate the cost of capital, it totally falls apart. So what we're going to try to do is use this and think about it in, in, in a much more sensible way. And then we're going to go through project finance and see how project finance and corporate finance meld together and how you can use IRRs and how IRRs and project finance are the same as returns if you use economic depreciation and how they measure the real kind of economic, uh, 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 the, the, the real, not the real in terms of real versus nominal, but the true return on invested capital. And we'll talk about this idiocy of taking write-offs and measuring the return after the write-off. So after a write-off, the return goes up, big deal. You think that, that that proves everything? You want a statistic. You want a statistic that is a performance measure and is used in valuation. And, well, that's those are the big ones and demonstrates and can be used as a, as a basis of forecasting. If you had a big write-off and so your return goes up, does that reflect the earning power of your corporation going forward? That's what you, that's what you want it to do. It doesn't. It can't. And if it's measuring performance, if you're trying to measure the performance of how your asset is really doing and whether we should make more of these kinds of investments and blah, 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 Okay, it doesn't do that either. If you, if because of straight line depreciation, everything's wrong. Because of, because of uh, 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 write-offs, everything's wrong. Because of goodwill, everything's wrong. Because of other accounting crap, everything's wrong. What are we gonna do? What are we going to do? We don't have anything to start with. We don't have any basis other than a bunch of mush. Okay, then we're gonna say okay. The elephant in the room in valuation is terminal value. We're going to use, I've said, we're going to use that corrected terminal value. Or we're going to split the company into what it earns from its lucky investment in some kind of film or whatever it does. It made some big lucky investment. That's going to tail off what kind of rate of return over the long run can you really expect we can't have an answer to that but at least at least we can get a sensible model and put that model together and get some kind of range and then we'll of course i'm, I'm not going to repeat the crap with cap m but once we have a, a valuation model with some interpolation on returns with some interpolation on uh 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 uh, growth rates, we can say, okay, here's what the theoretical value of the company was, but its value is different, and that difference in value is a way to derive, or the, the we use a goal stick basically to de derive the cost of capital. Screw all the whack and everything else, and we can do that on a return on invested capital basis or an equity basis to derive the equity return or the overall return. That's where we're going to go, and then I'm going to do my study, which I wanted to do forever, which says, is eating chocolate really that much more risky in Nigeria than it is in Switzerland? And can we look at P-E ratios? Can we look at deriving the cost of capital once we get a decent model to really do it? Take away the inflation in Nigeria, put it in a common currency, get the financial statistics and see if there's some sort of risk premium. If there is, fine. And if people are going to make eating chocolate in Nigeria more expensive because uh, uh, the cost of capital is higher, what a disgusting kind of world we live in, which we do for a whole other ones. And then, so I'm, I'm going to go through, I'm not going through these chapters. We're going to talk about the kind of returns. We're going to go through the how to prove these formulas, a little bit technical stuff, not too technical stuff, 
go through kind of where value is created, go through how you actually can get data on, on, on stocks. I'm going to go through on, on each one. In each chapter, there'll be a little video that goes along with the chapter explaining some of the technical details, and that's why I made this video just as an introduction. And that, this is going to take me forever, but I'm not giving up. I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. Okay.